I'm Effie, this is What Effie Reads and I currently have COVID but that's not going to stop me from reading a whole category in the Goodreads Choice Awards this year. Because I've had a change of jobs and I thought it was going to be pretty busy um, this year so I didn't think I could do the same level of reading a whole category as I did last year I decided to be really easy on myself and pick the graphic novels and comics category and I'm so glad I did considering about four days into trying to do this video I ended up getting COVID but this video needs no real introduction. A number of people do these kind of videos and they do them for different categories. As I say, I picked the graphic novels and comics category. Uh, last year I did debut novel, which I really enjoyed. Um, I ended up discovering some books that I probably would have never picked up otherwise. So before I get into the sort of vloggish footage of me reading these books, I'm going to quickly do a rundown of the 20 books that made the long list. So first up, and this is the only one that I don't have a physical copy of, is Welcome to St. Hell. I can't remember the author. I'm really sorry. But this is the first of many graphic memoirs in this category. This tells the story of a trans boy and his teenage years kind of coming to terms with his identity and just the teenage things really. Saga Volume 10 is the hotly anticipated um, latest volume in Saga. It follows two star-crossed lovers um from uh can't even say different planets one's from a moon one's from a planet and basically against all odds they fall in love and they have a baby called hazel that is not spoiler because saga literally opens with hazel being born and can't really say any more about it because this is volume 10 Laura Olympus Volume 2 reconceptualizes the Greek gods in a contemporary urban setting. I would say we're primarily following Hades and Persephone, but actually we're following a whole pantheon of gods. This is the second volume, obviously. <laughs> and in the first volume, just you just kind of were introduced to all the gods. Everything is Okay is a graphic memoir about depression and anxiety and one woman's just working through those feelings and starting to get help. Fangirl follows a 18-year-old girl, woman, whatever, um, who writes fan fiction about her favourite uh, book series and there's not really that much more to the story if I'm honest. Who Da F Are You is kind of a graphic memoir but very humorous. It follows, oh wait, no it's fictionalised actually, sorry. This one isn't a graphic memoir, it's like based on the author's experiences but very much fictionalised. It follows Huda after she moves to an area that has quite a large community of um, Muslims and she kind of goes through a bit of an identity crisis. Messy Roots is another graphic memoir. There's a lot in this category. This follows a Wuhanese American as she works through her identity in both her cultural identity as well as her sexual orientation. The Many Deaths of Layla Star takes place um, in, a, in and around Mumbai. 
Death gets called into um, her boss's office and gets told that she is being let go as a baby is just being born who is going to discover the secret to immortality. And basically it follows Death as she is reincarnated into the body of Layla Starr and how she gets on in the world. Demon in the Wood is a Grishaverse prequel. I have not read any Grishaverse, so I couldn't tell you specifics, but it follows um, this character's like origin story. Ducks is a graphic mem memoir about the author's time living and working on the oil sands in Canada. A career in books tells the story of three Asian American women who all work in different facets of publishing and it's kind of a little bit of feeling lost in your 20s kind of thing. Wash Day Diaries is a collection of five interconnected short stories that revolve around these four women getting their hair done. It's just um, a beautiful story of black joy and friendship. Killing Stalking tells the story of Yoon Bum who has fallen for um, a guy in his college class called Sang Woo and gets a little bit obsessive and when he breaks into Sang Woo's house his worst nightmare is just beginning. Crumbs is the sweet story of a seer and a witch. Um, it's just a really kind of cosy romance and it's got nice little magical elements to it. There's not too much too deep to it. The big thing is that Laurie um, is trying to get his learner license to fly and Ray is trying to become a member of the Magical Council. Thieves is the kind of cutesy love story between these two young girls as they set out on a quest to return the items that this young woman has stolen from people. It Won't Always Be Like This is a graphic memoir about a Filipino Egyptian American who spends her summers with her dad and his new family in Egypt. Squire is a fantasy about a refugee girl who decides to try and join the ranks of the knights as that will gain her full set citizenship in the world. It's a lovely story of found family and belonging. Oddball is a collection of vignettes around being odd and being in your late 20s. Heartstopper Volume 4 is the fourth instalment in the cute boy meets boy love story that is that takes place in Great Britain and is just full of queer cuteness. Chef's Kiss follows a recent graduate who is trying to find a job without much luck until he stumbles across a help wanted sign in a restaurant and ends up finding that he really enjoys it also it's got a food tasting pig called Winston which I think is so cute and now we will go back a couple of weeks to when I actually read these books and then I will pop back in at the end and let you know my final thoughts I'm not exactly a Christmas cracker I'm more of a seasonal slacker I come off like a less green grinch And I won't bite my tongue I won't budge an inch Cause there's so much to organize So many names to memorize And herein the problem lies I can't be bothered 
tree Ain't got time for Christmas Or your family Who's got room for carols To drink and be merry Ain't got time for Christmas Have you got time for me? Complaining about all these nothings But I can't socialize all week That's too much time for me to be acting sweet Cause there's a grown shopping list and deadlines that I've missed I'm a grump, you get the gist, yeah I can't be bothered Last week or so I've been visiting my family but I'm heading back home today and I figure why not try and read as many of the Goodreads Choice Award books in the category of graphic novels and comics as I can on the journey home. I have a total of six available to me on my person so if I can get through those, that will massively cut down the amount that I'm going to need to read for this vlog. So I finished Oddball and I loved it. Not every comic strip in this was a hit, but the vast majority I absolutely loved and felt like I wanted to share with so many people because I thought they would relate so deeply. So it's definitely a contender for best one like it's a little bit niche because it's vignettes rather than a through story but very very enjoyable and i think it's actually a five star for me so i think i'm pretty much back in scotland it's always a bit weird when we cross the border because it's not like they go welcome to scotland uh, but i think i'm pretty much back in scotland i've still got quite a bit of a journey left today but i finished squire and is gonna die so I'll be fairly brief. It ended up being maybe a four-ish star. It's fantasy but it doesn't have fantastical elements. I don't know if it's fantasy actually but like it's not set in the real world but there isn't like mythical creatures or anything. Um, I thought it had a lot of really good themes and the story and I really liked Durek. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce the character's name. Absolutely loved that character and really enjoyed it. I also would love if there was a sequel so you could see what happened next. But it also resolved in a way that was relatively satisfying. And now I've started a career in books. Um, I'm not sure if I'm honest. It's a bit dry. I don't really know what's going on but I will potentially keep you updated if I can charge my camera at some point on my journey but if not I will do a massive update when I get home later. So it's pretty much the end of the day. I got home a couple hours ago and I still haven't finished a career in books. Essentially my day just hasn't really gone how I expected it to um and this book's been taking me so long to read and I kind of wanted to finish it today but also it's making me feel really depressed like it's so devoid of hope like I feel like I'm kind of being melodramatic but essentially it's 20 somethings that are stuck in entry-level jobs and not achieving what they want and I just like I like the characters but something's missing for me with this book and I can't quite put my finger on it 
So I've decided I'm going to put a pin in it for tonight and I'm just going to wind down. It does mean I'm like three and a half books behind where I need to be, but I guess that just means I need to work harder the rest of the week. So today hasn't really gone how oh, on earth have I got on my... I think it's just fluff and a scrunchie. Um, today hasn't really gone how I'd planned. Like, I had the dentist this morning and like most people I hate the dentist so it was a thought going but also it turns out it was exactly what I needed because it gave me no space to be in my feelings or overthinking about things so it actually gave me a sort of sense of peace it was very bizarre but really oddly good for me like I don't think I would like want to go to the dentist if you know what I mean but it was good <laughs> um and then we found out that B has COVID which is fabulous because neither of us have, have gotten it so far so I expect within a few days, potentially, I'm going to get it, which will be so fun if that happens. Obviously not actually fun, but, you know. Um, but with all of the all of various things and the day I've been having, I haven't managed to crack open a rug, which means that I am way behind. So I'm just going to spend a few hours seeing how much progress I can make. Um, I've got about half of a Korean books to read. And then I think I'm going to move on to Docs. Like, the temptation is to read um, the smaller ones first. Um, but I think if I got the chunky ones out of the way, except for the Saga Omnibus, because that's really intimidating and that's going to take me a while. But if I read uh docs next it's like the chunkiest one out of the way and potentially i could read more of the smaller ones in one day or at least that's kind of my plan i don't know how it's gonna go um i still can't quite put my finger on why i'm not really loving a korean books but i did want to also say that one of the things i liked about squire was that it was very easy to follow the action and that's something I think I struggle sometimes with uh, graphic novels and comics but clearly it did it well and I mean same with a Korean books like you can follow the storyline fine I just am not really enjoying what I'm reading so it's been a couple of days since I last checked in because I just have been having the worst time trying to get through a career in books like it just wasn't doing anything for me and I think part of it is that it's like very specific in that it deals with like existential dread in your 20s and I just don't want to read about that to be honest like it's not an inherently bad book it's just not really for me if you know what I mean. Also, I can't remember if I mentioned earlier in the vlog about the fact that B had COVID, but now I've got it. Yay! Um, my first time since the start of the pandemic, which is fantastic. But I'm just gonna give myself permission to just spend the whole weekend reading, trying to get through this category of the Goodreads Choice Awards and just like do that really. I'm hoping that the next book that I read will be a bit more of a hit. I think I'm going to read Ducks and then probably Saga volume 1 to 9. So the Saga Omnibus isn't in the Goodreads Choice Awards but volume 10 is so I need to read volumes 1 to 9 before I can read volume 10 um, which is going to be a bit chunky but hopefully I can get cracking with that I suppose. So I've moved on to reading Ducks and I think I'm enjoying it more than a Korean books 
but I'm having a hard time keeping track of what's going on. Like, I think it's one of those graphic novels where a lot of the action or the story is through the pictures, but, like, the pictures don't really give you enough information. I don't know how to best describe it, but I'm finding it a little bit difficult to figure out what on earth is going on. I am about 60, 70 pages in, and, like, I've only got the barest idea of what is going on. And yet I'm still enjoying it more than a career in books. So I've managed to get to around 100 pages of Docs. I'm feeling slightly rougher than I did when I last checked in. Um, and I'm not loving Docs. Like, there's not much going on. There's not much to keep me intrigued, I think. Well... I mean, I've already decided I'm going to keep pushing through all of these because I'm determined to read all 20. But it's not winning me over just yet. Because um, I think the thing is, I'm not sure if it actually is a memoir, but it's a very uninteresting life so far. Like, there's misogyny, but that's pretty standard, unfortunately. And not much else, to be honest. Um... I think there's like another three, four hundred pages left. So more may happen, but at the moment it's just not doing it for me. I'm not even halfway through Docs and I'm having a really hard time. Like, I didn't think I was going to dislike anything more than I disliked a Korean books. But Docs is giving it a run for its money because it's so disjointed and it feels like nothing really is happening except for just constant misogyny like I just have nothing to hold on with this and there's a lot of I'm guessing Canadian slang dialect etc so I'm finding it really difficult at times to know what on earth they're saying and then it'll be like you feel like it's getting to something and then you turn a page and it'll be a completely different scene so it's a struggle bus and I'm not even halfway through it but I'm determined to like finish them although I'm fairly certain this isn't going to make the top 10. Um, Off the top of my head I think the top 10 is going to be Heartstopper, Demon in the Wood, Laura Olympus, um, probably Fangirl, uh, Saga Volume 10, what else, what else, what else? Um, I'd like to see Wash Day Diaries, even though I haven't read that one yet. I'd like to see Squire make the top ten. Um, I'm not sure. I'll have to have a like a proper think. But I'd be very surprised if Heartstopper Volume 4 doesn't win this whole category. But it's still interesting to see what else has actually made it to um to the top 20, I suppose. I don't know what I'm saying to be honest. I finally finished Docs and it got a lot heavier, like trigger, major trigger warning for SA. I don't really know what else to say, like unfortunately I found it difficult to kind of keep track of the story and the narrative just felt a little bit beyond my grasp. I also think I would have benefited from knowing literally anything about the oil sands before I read it like I think it's one of those niche things that like you don't realize you don't know anything about until you encounter and I could have benefited I think from like a couple of pages introduction into what the oil sands were and stuff I don't know um I can see it being an important and like interesting graphic novels for some people but unfortunately it just didn't quite hit the spot for me um as I say I found it really hard to keep track of the narrative and a lot of the times I couldn't even figure out what the dialogue was saying so not not great um on to better things now, I suppose. I'm happy to report that I finally had a win for this vlog. This graphic novel was amazing. Easily a five star. Well, 
I say that as if I didn't enjoy Oddball and Squire, but it feels like it took me so long to read A Career in Books and Ducks that it's been a while since I've had a win, but like I really, really enjoyed it. It's just such a beautiful story about life and death and just really enjoyed it. Um, but this was one of the graphic novels that I already owned before starting this video, so the chances of it being a win were pretty high. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to move on to next, but I'm just so glad that things have started turning around. I'm still a little COVID burrito and I'm also feeling a bit silly because it didn't occur to me that like voting has to close before the next round opens so I completely forgot to vote in the first round which is clever me. Um, I think I updated that I read the Many Deaths of Layla Star last night. Absolutely adored it. Since then, I've just read um, volume one of Fangirl, which isn't nominated, but volume two is. So I needed to read that first. Not loving it. Finding it a bit of a drag. Finding the protagonist a bit whiny. So I'm not expecting to love volume two. But I also think it's going to be one of the books that makes it into the top ten. Regardless of who the top 10 are announced to be tomorrow, I think it's going to be tomorrow, I do still intend on reading all 20 in this category. Um, so it'll be interesting to see who those are, but I am making progress slowly but surely. I think what I'll probably do is leave Saga to the end because it's going to take the longest. But I do fully expect Saga to be in the final 10. I think it's final 10 anyway. Um, they seem to change it up every year. But that is what I'm predicting. So right now I'm going to get cracking on volume 2 of Fangirl. Hopefully it doesn't take me too long to read. Because like, I'm not despising it as much as Docs or A Career in Books. But it's reading quite young and just... Quite whiny. I just have the need to pop in quick. Oh, I'm sorry, my hair is an absolute stain. Um, I just have the need to pop in really quickly because um someone has described the love interest that like I'm not vibing with the love interest. It really annoys me. Cause like he's her roommate's boyfriend, so like why is he a love interest? Also, the fact that he's, like, describing her as being, like, a little sister when, like, he's literally been, like, mm, incest? No, don't do that. And then he's, like, flirting with her but also describing her as a little sister. Anyway, um, someone has described him as being farm boy cute and all I can think of is um, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I want to say his name was, like, Ronan or Rowan the um the the cousin that was always tormenting Sabrina and referred to Harvey as farm boy that's all I can think of when I read that line and I'm like that's not endearing at all that's an insult but it also makes me think I must be a completely different generation to Rainbow Rowell that like that is seen as like a compliment and not an insult I finished volume two of Fangirl and I have some thoughts. First off, it annoys me that there's bits of carry on sprinkled through the story, but for the opposite reason than you might think. The reason that it annoys me that carry on is sprinkled throughout the story is that it shows me what could have been like if this had been an adaptation of Carry On rather than a fangirl I think it could have been a lot more fun a lot more interesting um I also don't like that they resolve the issue with Levi uh being Calf's roommate's boyfriend but 
like it was resolved so late into the volume that like you're not rooting for them as a couple because this is Kaf's roommate's boyfriend. So I'm like, mm -hmm. but on the other side of things, I actually want to know what happens next. So contrary to all expectations, I might actually be continuing this series. I'm pretty sure there's only going to be four volumes. So I don't think it's going to take me like too much more to finish the series. But I'm very surprised that I actually want to finish the series. Um, not what I expected at all. I would say this was very much a middle of the pack volume. Like, it wasn't amazing. It wasn't awful. Probably like a three star. Like, just dead on the line of a three star. And I think next I'm just going to read Who Did I For You? Because I think that's going to be quite a, a quick one. And. I'm quite looking forward to it, if I'm honest. So, I finished Who Dare F Are You? And I really enjoyed it. I don't think it was quite a five-star for me. But I didn't dislike it at all. It just, I suppose, didn't wow me. But I really enjoy how, like, this is a fictional account, like, based on the author's teenage years but like I enjoyed how like raw it was and it's always good to see a story from a different perspective so very enjoyable I think the next thing I'm probably going to read is The Demon in the Wood but I feel like I'm making real progress now and I'm actually getting through the graphic novels which is pretty exciting to be honest so I didn't get onto A Demon in the Wood last night I basically just crashed after I finished Who Dare For You, which is fine. Um, I probably should say as well, like, I haven't read any Lee Bardugo, at least I don't think I have. If I have, it's been in, like, short story format. Um, so I also know nothing about the Grisha verse. I haven't watched the Shadow and Bone series. So I think it's going to be interesting to see if the prequel actually works in its own right. Or if it's one of those prequels that really you need to know a bit more about the Grisha verse to get something out of. Um, also, <laughs> I'm starting to get a bit frustrated because, like, I'm being very gentle with myself because I don't want my symptoms to suddenly get worse and then to have expended, like, all of my energy. I want to be able to kind of keep at a level keep going but like I feel basically fine like I wouldn't say that I'm asymptomatic but I also like if it weren't for the fact that I knew B had COVID last week I probably wouldn't have even bothered testing because it literally just feels like like you know when you don't it's not like when you have a cough, it's when, like, you feel like you need to clear your throat. So every so often I'll just have that. Like, I don't feel like I have a cough, I don't feel particularly bunged up, etc, etc. Like, yeah, I'm a little bit uh, weary and a little bit lightheaded, but, like, I feel fine. But also, like, I did a test today and the first day I tested negative, I think, was... No, not negative, sorry. The first day I tested positive, I think, was Saturday. I think that's right. I can't even remember now. Um, And it's now Tuesday, right? And this has only been running for, like, half the time. But, like, that is so incredibly, like, positive. And I'm like, just stop. Like, I'm fine. And from a moral standpoint, like, everyone can only do what they can do. And the lack of law preventing people from, like, going out. Like, basically, I could go out right now and, like, perfectly fine. But, like, my personal feelings is that, like, I can't go out like this. Like, I wouldn't feel right. 
And the thing is, if I was going out, most likely I'd be going out to the supermarket and I think I live in an area where there's a lot of older people, there's also a lot of kids, there's a school right next to the supermarket. Um, so I just don't feel like it would be right for me to go out right now. But also um, my parents got us a ninja foodie for Christmas and I really want to play with it but I don't have like food to make in it and that's making me a bit frustrated but I also do have a lot of graphic novels to get on with so basically this has been my self-indulgent three minutes and I'm going to crack on and see if Demon in the Wood makes any sense knowing nothing about the Grishaverse. Wow. I've kind of been spoiled for Crooked Kingdom, I think. But, like, I only remember, like, the tiniest little bit. So, like, I don't remember it enough. Like, I think if I were to read Crooked Kingdom, I'd remember enough of the spoiler for it to be, like, frustrating and probably ruin my experience. But, like, I don't remember it enough to be able to spoil anyone else. Not that I would anyway. Um, But, yeah. I'm going to get on with Demon in the Wood and uh, just live my best life, I suppose. I've managed to read Demon in the Wood. It was a relatively quick read. I think it took me under an hour to read it from cover to cover. Um, and overall, I'd say it was really enjoyable. It made me want to learn more of the story, which I guess means reading the Shadow and Bone trilogy and the rest of the books in the Grishaverse since this is a prequel. Um, I think it also did a pretty good job of introducing the world and the Grisha and everything to the reader. So even though I went in not really knowing anything about Grisha or the Grishaverse, I didn't feel completely lost. I would say that it could have done with a little bit more text. Like, it was one of those where a lot of the pages were quite light on text and you had to understand the story based on the pictures, which can be a bit difficult, especially if you don't really understand fully the mechanics of the world and what's going on. But I think really well done. I think... I probably would have appreciated it more if I knew more about the world because based on the um, acknowledgements at the end, I think the main character in this is someone pretty significant in the Grisha world. But overall, I had a good time with it. I'd say it's probably about a four star. I am going to go have a shower because hoping that'll make me feel a bit more like a human and then I think I'm going to try and figure out which 10 I think have made the shortlist and then actually check which 10 did make the shortlist so I will be back in probably a couple of hours to be honest so I'll see you then so I'm in the library I've had a look at the books that were in the first round the top 20 because I keep forgetting all the names of the titles. And I think the top 10 are going to be Laura Olympus Volume 2, Fangirl Volume 2, Chef's Kiss, A Career in Books, Oddball, Killing Stalking Deluxe Volume 1, I think that's what it's called, um, Demon in the Wood, Heartstopper Volume 4, Wash Day Diaries and Saga Volume 10. Of those, the ones that I'm most unsure about whether they will make the top 10, but I think they've got the potential because of their kind of almost cultishness to them, even though they're new releases. Um, A Career in Books and Wash Day Diaries and possibly Killing Stalking. I think Oddball is kind of a bit of an outsider, but I think Sarah Anderson is quite well liked. Like the author of Fangs, um, and I mean, I feel like Sarah Scribbles is quite well known. So 
I wouldn't be surprised. But anyway, I'm rambling. Let's have a look and see what actually made the top 20. I am not recording my screen at the moment, so I'm sorry if I'm like looking at my screen rather than the camera. Right, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Oh, I think there's going to be... Oh, okay. There's two in here that I hadn't guessed. So, Wash Day Diaries, Who Da F Are You, Heartstopper Volume 4, Everything Is Okay, Laura Olympus Volume 2, um, Fangirl Volume 2, Ducks, Saga Volume 10, Demon in the Wood, and Oddball. So, there were just three that I got wrong, so I guess seven of them correct, which I think is not too bad. Of the ten that are in the top, um, I've read Fangirl, Oddball, Demon in the Wood, Heartstopper Volume 4, Ducks, Who the F Are You? I will be reading all 20, but of the top four, I still need to read Laura Olympus Volume 2, um, Wash Day Diaries, Saga Volume 10, and Everything Is Okay. Which, to be fair, if I wasn't reading the top 20, that would be pretty manageable to read before the end of this round but i'm pretty happy with that selection not too surprised i'm sure well i say i'm pretty happy i'm a bit sad that lola star didn't make this round but i'm also unsurprised because ultimately this is a popularity contest and what we are seeing is the popular books have made it to this round and that's another graphic novel done. I have now finished Welcome to St. Hell by Lewis Hancox. It was okay. I can't quite put my finger on why it didn't wow me. But as far as, you know, representation, like, is great seeing, like, a, a trans story and reading about um his teenagers but just something was missing for me and didn't quite excite me like I think it was probably about a 3.5 um and there's not really much I can say about it if I'm honest and I'm now going to take a pause from reading graphic novels as I got some pretty exciting mail today and I want to sew it onto my new hooded blanket um, and finish listening to Fire and Blood, which obviously is not something I need to do for this vlog, but I want to finish it before the end of the month, so I might as well do it tonight, and then if I've got time after I finish sewing, I think I'm going to read Everything Is Okay. I am currently reading Everything Is Okay, um... I'm just kind of working through them in whatever order I pick them up at this point. But what I will say is, like, it's really relatable, but it's also coming across pretty heavy-handed, much like The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, even though a completely different format and stuff, because it's kind of like, be grateful for what you have. And, like, even though it's, like, trying to be, like, telling someone to cheer up doesn't make them cheer up it, it is literally being like be grateful that you can do these things be grateful be grateful and i'm like kind of missing the point like i know for some people that's helpful but for me i'm just like feeling like it's losing me and it was kind of great for the first like 100 pages you're like yes i recognize this I feel this, but now, because I think it's meant to be like a, a journey of like healing or living with depression and anxiety, it's becoming a lot more preachy and a lot less relatable, which is a shame. But I will check back in when I finish and see if my views change at all. By the end of Everything Is Okay, I'd kind of come back around and I was enjoying it again. I do think it was a little... I 
don't even know how to put my finger on it. Like, it made it seem like things were a lot easier than they were. And I'm happy that the author has kind of managed to find that balance. But it somehow managed to feel a bit out of touch. Like, not everyone's going to find things as easy as the book seems to portray it. I don't know, like, it's always really hard when things are from the author's experience because people are not a monolith and one person's struggles isn't going to be the same as another person's struggles, but that doesn't make it any less struggly. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm trying to say here. Like, it felt a lot less preaching, a lot less just put a happy face on things by the end of it like it was very aware that like things are not linear you'll have your bad days blah 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 but I don't know I think it tried to like straddle the line between being the author's like story and personal journey and like trying to be like relatable and optimistic and I think if it had been like one or the other it might have worked but the execution just wasn't quite there for me I would say probably overall it's come out like a 3.25 star just because it did feel a little bit tri trite it's trite the right word I don't know if it's trite like it felt a little too glib maybe I don't know but now I think at the top of my pile is Lower Limbus Volume 2, which I'm very excited to pick up. I didn't get very far into Lower Olympus yesterday. I was feeling kind of out of it. So I'm maybe about 50 pages in, but I am enjoying Volume 2 more than Volume 1 because I think I was expecting more of a, a romance when I first picked up this series. And I think it is a romance, but it's a very, very slow burn romance. So I was a bit disappointed when I read volume one and it was just like the characters first meeting and you didn't see much of the romance. Whereas volume two feels like you go straight in and like they're kind of vibing and you're seeing that romantic tension between the two. Now, I haven't gotten particularly far in, like I said, I'm about 50 pages, and I think it's um, three or four hundred pages long, but I'm I'm really enjoying it. So, I've been feeling, oh, I've got books falling on top of me. I've been feeling pretty out of it today, but I did manage to finish Laura Olympus Volume 2, and I really enjoyed it I think I enjoyed it more than volume one actually I gave it a, a 4.75 I can't remember what I gave volume one but I just know that I feel like I enjoyed it more I I do really like the world I think it's one of those that like I know I could read it online but, like, I'm kind of mad that I'm getting into it as it's being published. So, I I only get, like, little snippets at a time and I just want to get lost in the world for, well, for the whole story, really. But that's not an option. Um, And then I also read Wash Day Diaries and... It's really hard to kind of convey because in some ways this is a much like simpler, softer story, but in the in another way, like it's very meaningful. It's five interconnected short stories, um and they all involve these four best friends. Sorry, the cover's really shiny. These four best friends, like, getting their hair done or doing their hair. And it's just such a beautiful ode 
to friendship and hair and black joy and I really really enjoyed it. I would love more stories from these characters because they're all so lovable. Also I loved that there was just some like casual queer rep thrown in there. So this was also a 4.75 and now I have started reading Killing Stalking um, Deluxe Edition Volume 1 or something and it's really weird. I don't know what I'm going to make of it um, because so far it's just coming across as really strange. And I think it's also weird to me that it kind of feels very much manga-esque, but it's read front to back and left to right. And it feels like it should be back to front and right to left. So that's kind of throwing me. Um, but the main character is really strange. So it'll be interesting to see how he develops as a character and the sort of interpersonal relationships but yeah I'm just gonna crack on I don't know if I'll be back at the end of finishing this or if I'll do an update in a few books time because I'm feeling kind of like just pretty out of it today um but yeah that's my update for now so I've been kind of out of it the past couple of days but I am almost done with reading all of the graphic novels and in fact I've got tears streaming down my face because I've just caught up with Saga ready to read volume 10 which will be my last graphic novel slash comic that I need to read um I promise to like come back and give thoughts after I have read Saga volume 10 but, like, I knew that it was going in the direction it was going, but it broke my heart. Like, I love it so much, and I didn't think that saga was going to be my top pick of this video, but I think it might actually be my top pick. <laughs> um, I guess we'll see how Volume 10 pans out but just wow just 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 so much wow to be honest so I was a little unsure about Saga volume 10 when I started reading it because of the way that volume 9 left off but it really grew on me and the way they ended and just decided to like rip your heart out all over again was fantastic um I'm gonna have to have a think about whether it is my favorite of all the graphic novels and comics that I have read over the past couple of weeks I would say the saga as a whole I absolutely adored but whether volume 10 of saga is better than the other books in this category I'm not 100% sure so I think I've managed to gather up all of the graphic novels that I still need to give my thoughts on. So in no particular order, we've got Crumbs, which I thought started off very strong, but then it was maybe just like 100 pages too long. Um, I think unfortunately it lost some of its magic as it just continued going on and on. Like it was cosy, um, the magic system was a lot of fun, it contained some really nice characters but yeah just the, the magic dwindled as it went on. Also I was quite disappointed because I thought it was going to be queer and it wasn't like it does have queer rep in but for me there's there's a chasm of difference between a book being queer and a book having queer rep and 
you know, if the if the central couple isn't queer, then it isn't a queer book, regardless of how much rap it has. Um, I mean, obviously there's exceptions for allegories and whatnot, but it wasn't that either. So it it was fine. It just fizzled a bit. It won't always be like this was a graphic memoir and I think during my journey through this category I think I've basically realised that graphic memoirs often are not going to be the kind of thing that I want to read. This is about a Filipino Egyptian American a girl who has divorced parents and spends her summers in Egypt with her father and her father's new wife and it's kind of about like her growing up and also her finding her place within that family I just didn't get very much out of it like it was fine it was sweet but I think it was trying to do something but it didn't quite read on the page also um there was a lot of arabic in this book which is fine but it felt like it was crossing into that place where you lost a lot of context and information because of the amount of Arabic that was within the book. Um, like, I don't for a moment think that authors should dumb down their writing or whatnot, but when you are losing the story because you can't understand what's being said, that that's a shame. But overall, it was just that the story itself didn't do very much for me. And I also... As much as I'm sure it's not the moral of the story, especially with it being a non-fiction, the, the way that the author's stepmother's story ended felt almost infantilising. I'm not quite sure. Um, more than happy to have a conversation and I'd love to hear... Um, thoughts from uh, women who choose to wear the hijab um, on their thoughts about her stepmother's um, story, I guess. Thieves um, is, is actually queer. It's the story between these two characters who like to steal things, like... There's a bit more to it, like, she does it as a... If you've watched How I Met Your Mother, it's a bit like Aldrin Justice. Um, and then she kind of accidentally steals whilst drunk. <laughs> it, it was fine. There wasn't very much to it. It was just largely, like, their cutesy love story. And then this thing about them like trying to return the stolen items to the people that they'd stolen from. Um, it was very strange as well because the one of the plot points is because in school they were studying for like a French exam, but they were clearly in a a French school. So why they were studying for an exam like it was a foreign language in a French school um, didn't make much sense. To, well, it didn't, it didn't not make sense to me. Like, I understood what they were doing, but it just took me out of the story. So this was kind of a very mid graphic novel for me. The biggest surprise um, of this video is probably Messy Roots. It is the story of a Wuhanese American um, woman. It's queer, but the, the surprise of it was that this is a, 
um, graphic memoir and I actually really enjoyed it. It didn't do anything super special, super amazing, but I just loved the the rawness, the growth. Um, it was really interesting to just explore this uh, person. Uh, this um this person's culture and it was just a pleasant surprise really and i think if i've not missed any this is the last book i need to give thoughts on i think the last time i updated on this one i was about a quarter halfway through i really enjoyed it it's dark twisted i didn't know there was like a subcategory of boy love that's horror um it was a very strange story but i definitely really want to continue with this one because i'm interested to see where these characters go and i just had a really fun time with it um i also was really amused by the way that it censored out the genitals. I don't know if I can find a picture. Uh, I can't immediately find the picture, but basically it just leaves a void on the page whenever genitals are seen within it. Before I give my final thoughts, I just want to quickly talk about the two graphic novels that I'd already read before I started this video, and they are Heartstopper Volume 4 and chef's kiss um chef's kiss is one that i'd had my eye on for a while it possibly was even on one of my most anticipated lists um and it totally lived up to expectations i really enjoyed how cute and queer it was it had a really good found family thing and it didn't dwell too much on the person in their 20s feeling lost and not sure what to do with their life that I feel like a lot of graphic novels are sort of doing but they're not getting the balance quite right and it's just becoming the level of relatable that's like uncomfortable to read um so I really enjoyed that and with regards to Heartstopper I don't need to say too much about it because it's really well known now it's got a Netflix tv show but volume four is my favourite volume so far and uh, <laughs> I've actually like even got like a favourite page in it and when I went to Yalk I had that specific page signed by Oseman so it was always going to be fairly high on my list. So before I end this video um, I'm going to give you a rundown from 20th to 1st of how I ranked all of these books. Feel free to leave some comments if you want more details on any of the books and feel free to suggest any books that have a similar kind of feel that you think I would like. It doesn't have to be specifically graphic novels and comics, it can be just anything you think has a similar vibe to the things that I've enjoyed. So in 20th place we've got A Career in Books, then in number 19 we've got Docs, Fangirl Volume 2, It Won't Always Be Like This, and then Welcome to St. Hal, Thieves, Everything Is Okay, um, and then we're getting into ones that I actually quite liked. So this is overall been a pretty good video. Uh, Crumbs. Demon in the Wood. Messy Roots. Wash Day Diaries. And remember, these are all ones that I actually quite enjoyed. Um, a lot of these books were really, really good. Squire. Laura Olympus Volume 2, Who Da F Are You, Killing Stalking Deluxe Volume 1, Oddball, 
and these final four I found really difficult to rank so it's somewhat arbitrary but also it feels right chef's kiss heartstopper volume four saga volume 10 which means that our winner is from all The Many Deaths of Layla Star. Words can't quite convey just how much I love this. Um, so let me know in the comments which of these books you've read and what you thought about them. And I am away to vote now because I think voting closes in about eight hours. Although I think this video is going to be up after the voting closes. So until next time. Love you. Bye. There's a place.